William, hopefully your favorite videographer. We are here at the Dallas Area Rapid Transit Board meeting of January 14th, 2014. Agency known as DART to Dallas, Texas residents. As a service to Dallas community, we are planning to cover DART board meetings from gavel to gavel. There is a special hearing on test routes without much comment. Without much comment, these routes could vanish. Public comments are required to keep these test routes running. This week there is a quorum and business is quickly dispatched and a minimum of public comments. This is a very short meeting. Business is, is approval of the minutes of the prior meeting. Um, is there a motion of approval? So moved. Second. Any questions, comments, corrections? Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, please enter the minutes of. Uh, uh, please enter the, the, the minutes of the prior meeting. Um, Uh, prior to public hearing, uh, excuse me, prior to public comments, um, we, we're going to hold a uh, public hearing on the bus service in, in, in um, Arlington Highland Park and University Park. I am going to ask the vice chair to uh, read the public hearing introduction. Thank you. Public hearing on experimental services implemented in 2013. Good evening. Thank you for attending tonight's public hearing. My name is Faye Wilkins and I will be I am Vice Chair and Mr. Robert Strauss, Chairman of the Board, will be the hearing officer this evening. For your information, DART has not received a request for hearing impaired services at this public hearing. Therefore, we have not provided a sign language interpreter. We do, however, have Spanish translation services available. Is there anyone here who requires this service? Is there anyone here who requires Spanish translation services? If not, the translator is relieved. Excuse me, mm -hmm. would you, as translator, make that request in Spanish? Thank, Thank you. you very much. The translator is relieved. Tonight's public hearing will be divided into two parts. The first part will consist of a brief overview on the project by DART technical staff. The public hearing will follow the presentation. During the public hearing, we must follow some guidelines. Pre-registered speakers will make their comments first, followed by sign-in speakers in an order received. Those who do not wish to speak may submit written comments. All comments will be included in the official public record. A dartboard resolution has established a limit of three minutes per speaker. Speakers must address the topic of the hearing. Other subjects will not be allowed in this hearing. Questions, interchange, and discussions are not generally allowed in a hearing. However, if a board member wishes to raise a question, he or she may do so. Technical staff will be available after the public hearing for questions. 
Now, Rob Smith, Assistant Vice President for Service Planning and Development, will make his presentation. Good evening. Tonight's public hearing covers new experimental services that were introduced in 2013. Public hearings are required for changes involving new routes, routes with modifications to at least 25% of their alignment, routes with significant adjustment in service frequency, or a major change to destinations along the route. The first new service included in this hearing is Route 221, more commonly known as the Arlington Max, which began operation in August of 2013. A joint project by DART and the T, Route 221 connects College Park in Arlington to Centerport Station on the Trinity Railway Express. These services were introduced under a board-approved interlocal agreement in accordance with DART's policies for service operating outside of the service area. In November, a third stop was added, and there were schedule adjustments. The second new service is the Park Cities on Call, introduced in November. This on-call zone offers demand responsive transportation from an anchor point at Mockingbird Station, and it serves Highland Park and portions of University Park and Dallas. It operates during weekday peak hours, offering access for workers and residents of the areas served. Staff will forward a recommendation for potential board approval of these services at a subsequent meeting. An approved ILA already covers operation of the Arlington service. And this concludes the technical presentation. Thank you, Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. Um, we have some speakers. Actually, we have one written comment uh, for the public hearing, which we will enter, and there are representatives of the town of uh, of, the, uh, of the town of Highland Park, um, Mr. Brown, Mr. Bogenwright, and Mr. Smith. Um, we thank you for your cooperation in working through this process with us, and I understand you prefer not to speak, but thank you for your note. <laughs> Um, the next order of business. No, I need to what? finish this. Oh, yes. Okay. Tonight's hearing is being recorded by a court reporter, so all comments received are a matter of public record. It is now 6.45 p.m. Tuesday, January 14, 2014. According to the requirements set forth in DART's enabling legis legislation, this public hearing on experimental services implemented in 2013 is now open to receive comments. To date, DART has received one written comment on the above issue. Any written comments received by today will be added to this total. We will begin to receive comments now. So if there's someone who has not registered to speak, who wishes to speak, you may speak now. I have no pre-registered speakers listed for this public hearing. Is there anyone present that would like to make comments on the issue this evening? Okay. Please state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Patty Walker, and I'm, at, um, I'm a Dallas resident, 5021 Winona, Dallas, Texas. I would like to comment that I have used both the Arlington and also the Dallas Dart on Call from the Mockingbird Station to the Highland Park and University. This is an excellent, excellent program that you have because I have a very difficult time getting to some of the businesses from where I live at. In my neighborhood, it backs up to Inwood Village which is in a car, it's only about five minutes away. <clears throat> but on the bus, it's, it's impossible to get there. It's a, like a five to six block walk. It may, may even be longer than that to some of the businesses there. But if I go to the Mockingbird Station, it takes me right to the businesses that I need to go to. Also, over in the Highland Park and University Park area, there are certain places that I need to go to that I can use the door on call, and it is, a very, very good program. 
Also, this past year, I went to Arlington, and I used the Arlington bus system, and it was excellent. I had no problem with it, and I wish that you would continue these programs. That's all I need to say. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> there are no other speakers listed. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Would anyone like to turn in a written comment to be entered into record? Any comments made after the close of the public hearing would not be part of the record of these proceedings. Since there are no other speakers or written comments to be turned in at this time, I would like to thank you for attending this public hearing, which is now officially closed at 6.48 p.m. Thank you. Uh, the next order of business is, thank you very much. The, 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 the next order of business is the report of the Citizens Advisory Committee. Um, Mr. Brady. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. The committee continued work on the issues and concerns tracking form and process brought for, forward by Vice Chairman Phyllis Silver at our October session. We dealt with the examples of possible issues reporting forms as well as spreadsheet templates <coughs> and reviewed those in a rather vigorous discussion. We agreed that the tracking numbers should be initially assigned to each reported item and concern and included on the review sheet. Writers and citizens often present concerns in addition to those that are regularly observed by CAC members throughout the service area. It was agreed that the tracking system would provide ways to show trends <coughs> or delays in problems resolution. Some of the members have expressed concerns that the requests and issues have not been addressed in a timely manner to meet the writer's needs. So the more detailed tracking system could be used to highlight multiple problems and trends which could be presented to the board and the staff for consideration and action. And the use of electronic versions would avoid the paper load in ways similar to what you have done with your board and committee meetings. We've all benefited from the communication speed in problems resolution. And the tracking system is a work in progress the drafts will be reviewed in more detail at our Thursday meeting. And all of you are certainly welcome to join us and observe the actions and share your thoughts with us. At our December meeting, food and fellowship were really the highlights of the holiday gathering. We appreciate very much the work of staff members Lawrence Meshack, Tracy can too throughout the year. Mike Miles joined us with some holiday wishes. Mr. Miles was the staff liaison during CAC's formation. He and tenured members of the <coughs> committee reflected on DART's real progress over three decades. It's something all of you and your predecessors can really be proud of. Marketing VP Nevin Gadrell also joined us and urged some joint efforts to help riders of all ages get on board with the Go Pass. The CAC is looking forward to some status updates on that success. We'll be electing officers for the coming year at our meeting Thursday night. Thank you very much for your work and effort. Thank you very much for your services, Mr. Brady, and welcome back. Glad to see you here. Thank you. Our, our next
next order of business is public comments. Um, um, it, it was Miss Patty Walker spoke earlier, and I assume you were registering to speak on on the public hearing, and you've already spoken. Is that correct? Do you wish to speak again? Now was the, now was your opportunity to speak at the public comments. Yes, ma'am. Once again, my name is Patty Excuse Walker. Excuse me. Um, oh, no, no. Okay. I'm sorry. No Just I need to read this before you begin. You can stand right there. Thank you so much. I apologize. General public comments will be allowed at the beginning of each dartboard meeting for a total of 30 minutes. And again, at the end of the meeting, when the 30-minute period does not accommodate all persons who have signed up to speak. Individuals who have addressed the board in the past 30 days will be recognized to speak during the public uh, comment period at the end of the meeting. During the public comment period, board members may not interact with speakers or other board members by asking questions or offering their own comments. Members of the public are reminded that their behavior during DART board meetings is governed by the DART board code of conduct for citizens, news media, and visitors. Personal attacks, impertinent or slanderous remarks, and boisterous conduct will not be allowed. Each speaker will have three minutes to address the board. The green light on the podium will, indicate, will indicate when you can begin speaking. The yellow light indicates that you have one minute remaining, and the red light indicates that your time has expired. And our first speaker, Mr. Chair. Well, <laughs> nice to see you again, Ms. Walker. Thank you. I have one major complaint to make this evening. It's about when you call in to the door company to complain about something that happened on the bus line and you leave your name and phone number, you never hear back from them again. So could you please forward this along that if someone calls in to please respond to what the problem is. One of the major problems I've, I've been having is with bus number 408. When it comes from Irving, there's the last two stops before it turns off of Irving Boulevard into Mockingbird. The bus drivers are driving in the middle lane. They're not in the right lane. They will pass you up, and you're standing there just waving at them, and they either won't stop, or when they do stop, you try to catch, go to the bus, and when you get to the end of the bus, they take off and they leave you. And many times, you have to wait a whole hour for the next bus to come. So. Please tell the 408 bus to please drive in the right hand lane and not in the middle lane. The other problem that I, that I have seen on a number of occasions is your door rail drivers. Right there at the west end, a number of times, they'll be right there with the, the light is red. People will go up to the train and they will push no. for the door to open. The train drivers will pull up to keep from opening up the door, and they can't move because the light is red, just to keep the people from getting on the, on the train. I mean, it doesn't take but a split second to open up the door because they can't leave anyway. So some of these attitudes with the uh, bus drivers and with the train drivers needs to be addressed by this board or by their supervisors, and that's what I needed to bring up. Thank you. Um. Ms. Walker, would you please talk with Tim Newby, who is raising his hand right over there. Um, our next speaker is Mr. is Mr. Kenneth Newton, and following Mr. Newton, um, Ms. Peggy Jackson.
Good evening. My name is Kenneth Newton. I'm a user of your paratransit system. And I'd like to know where all these people that are saying your, your service is getting better are being interviewed because nobody's ever interviewed me, okay? I don't see the service getting any better. If anything, it's getting worse. And I don't know if the board members remember me. When you made the announcement in 2011 that you were hiring MV, I simply told you you made a mistake. Now, right now, all I can say is I told you so. The company that you let go, Veolia, they are right now running all of Nassau County's buses and paratransit. Nassau County buses are about seven times larger than your regular DART buses. I think you better call New York, talk to Veolia and try to get them back here because your service is dangerous. I tried to tell MV then, they only made one improvement. And I do think I'm qualified because I'm a retired New York City subway work. I used to repair subway cars. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tut um, thank you, Mr. Newton. Um, Ms. Peggy Jackson. Ms. Peggy Jackson. Um, we'll pass Ms. Jackson if she returns. Um, she will speak then. Uh, Ms. Jacqueline Scott. Good evening. Good evening. I just wanted to uh, address the board. I am currently a contract worker for Vets of uh, Security Company that y'all had, that y'all hired in uh, December. I just wanted to address that, that right now the security company that we currently work for, it's not too promising. I am currently a displaced worker from DISD from 2008. Uh, and the reason why I attended this board meeting is because I wanted to address that issue and to see why DORT just could hire us as being permanent workers. Thank you so much. Ms. Scott, would you talk with Mr. Nicholas? Um, our next speaker is uh, Ronnie Brown. Ronnie Brown. Our next speaker then is um, Carrie Yarborough. Good evening, Mr. Yarborough. Good evening. I'll come back to address the board for another three minutes of your time, and I thank you for taking the time to be here and listen to me again. We're still having the same problems we've had on the bus system out there. Uh, don't know what we can do about it. We're still not having buses there on time. Uh, they're either running way early, off, way off schedule, over 30 minutes late, like the one last night, or I get to downtown Garland uh, 34 minutes late, then I missed the bus there to South Garland. So where I was going, they closed at 7 o'clock, I couldn't get on time. So uh, I wanted to not be able to get there, so my whole trip, which was an hour and a half, was wasted. So I spent an hour and a half getting back home, and it was three hours wasted. I still didn't get my destination. I go this morning back. Uh, uh, to where I needed to go, and 30 minutes, uh, three hours of my time wasted. Uh, before, I was at the Spring Valley Station, and I got on the bus going what I thought was to Addison. Instead, when I got down to Spring Valley, it turned the opposite direction. I asked if it was a bus going to, to Addison because it said Addison on the front of it, and it stopped at the Addison pickup at the Spring Valley Station, and I was told it was going the other direction. It was going to downtown Garland. So I got off and went back to the station, waited for the next one. I missed the one going to Addison then. I had to wait 30 minutes for that, added another 30 minutes to my day. And there were two ladies over there, I needed to go the other way, and they added 30 minutes to their day each. 
Um, we just have more problems like this. Uh, bus is running early, bus is not showing up, driving past us and not picking us up, just driving right past. Three Sunday mornings in a row, there's been no bus out there at 7.30 in the morning going northbound on the 410 route. Uh, either the operator doesn't show up, bus is running eight minutes early, or the last time I called in, they said the tracking system was showing that it went through there at exactly 7.30, and I was there from 7.25 on, and it did not go through there. Yesterday, I was told, when I called into the dispatch that the tracking system showed it went through Beltline and Shallow at uh, 5.53, and I was there at 5.46, and there was no bus there at 5.53. When the bus did come 30 minutes later at 6.23, I thought it was the next round of the bus. After getting on and getting to downtown Garden, I realized it was not. It was the previous round, 34 minutes late, which caused me to be, I wasted my trip to downtown Garland and uh, wasted three hours that day, for, uh, probably about three hours. Uh, still have problems with the train stations, basically, and at the bus stops, people come right up in my face, right next to me, polluting the air with toxic, deadly poison. I guess they has jumped to the conclusion that I want to breathe that stuff, and it's a major health issue. And DART ought to have somebody working for them in the legal department that can draft a resolution to send to the state legislature to get a state law passed to make it against the law to smoke at any airport, train station, bus terminal, anywhere where public transit is, where the rest of us, the 93% of the population that don't engage in that activity and don't want to, won't have to breathe the toxic deadly poison that's been known to cause allergy problems, emphysemas, cancers, uh, all that sort of thing. And I could go on and on and on about the other problems we have in DART. Security is a major problem in the uh, private security guards you have out there at those train stations. Don't do any good. They're a waste of total money total mm -hmm. for you. Mr. Thank Yarbrough, you. Thank, you, thank you for coming. Would you please speak with Mr. Bell? Maurice, there, there. Thank you. No. Uh. Has Kerry Yarborough returned? Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, Ronnie Brown? Any other speakers? Okay. Oh, Mr. Cal uh, Mr. Caldwell? Yes, sir. Sorry, I was late. No, I'm sorry. I missed it. Thank you for coming. Good, good evening. I'll try to be brief. I speak as a civil engineering graduate from Texas A&M, now a student at Parker University. I have seven points of suggestions to make. I would be glad to help with implementation of any of these. First, <clears throat> by comparing your bus system to that of the bus system in the city of Austin, your, si your system maps are only available at the bus depots. They're not available on any bus. My recommendation there for rather than printing out more of them would be to post a system map in the overhead advertisement area or, as it were, just print more of them. I noticed that they are not sized the same as the individual route maps, so you would probably save costs if you use the same size fold as the individual route maps. Uh, the layout on the back of the map, so that when you unfold it, is not user friendly. On the back of the map, if you unfold it all the way, you are provided with a map of downtown Dallas. However, in just unfolding it so that it is lengthwise rather than length and width large, reveals a map of downtown Fort Worth, which if we're in the city of Dallas, where more, interest, more users are probably interested in finding their destination in downtown Dallas than a destination in downtown Fort Worth. So I would suggest reorganizing the columns and rows on that. Similarly, in the fold breaks, there is a there's a two by three column of stop locations for the trains 
that you have to unfold to all four panels in order to see just those two panels of because it breaks from the panel that's already exposed across onto the, that second panel, which is not. The 41411 text message system to find out when the next bus arrives is completely non-functional at any bus stop which does not already have a complete schedule posted. <coughs> In attempting to use it, I texted 41411 as is displayed on every bus stop sign and that simply returns an error message every time unless I'm at a stop that already has the full schedule posted. The elevators, I have three points left. How, how many more, how many that? That, that was four points of my seven. Well, I'm going to ask you to speak with um, with Mr. Rob Smith. Or Morgan Lyons. Smith? Better still. M Morgan Lyons. <coughs> Are there any further speakers? Good evening, boy. Mr. Chairman, I, didn't, I did evening. not sign a card and I know better, but I thank you for the opportunity to speak. I was not planning to speak, but I've had the opportunity to sit in several of the uh, subcommittee meetings discussing the power of transit and contract. And I also have been around the power of transit contract, the transition. And I am deeply concerned for the service that's being provided and for the employees that work at Paratransit. And I am very disturbed when I see the articles in the newspaper say there is a equitable adjustment that needs to be made because a 4% increase was given to employees. The perception is that is the reason, and that's very disturbing. You're talking about less than 200 employees. The company was proposing to give them a 2% increase. So they got an additional 2%. But the paper is broadcasting it as the employees is the cause or the reason for an equitable adjustment. That is very disturbing. I can say to you, and I, I hate to do this, as an earlier speaker, he came before you. He, when he walked away, he said, I told you so. He said, I told you so. We all anticipate when you come into a business and you bid a contract, you anticipate certain things happening. And when I sit around and I listen, it makes me believe nothing was anticipated. Nothing was anticipated. And to blame it on labor is very disturbing. I ask that y'all really, really consider what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further speakers? Um, we have two action items this evening. Um, the first comes um, the, the first item is um, item five on the agenda. Um, Ms. Wilkins, this comes out of the rail committee. It's the price adjustment for the traction power station contract for the light rail build out phase two for Irving three substations. Yes, sir, this item was discussed in committee, committee of the whole, and it has been passed to the board for final approval, and I make a motion that we uh, pass this item. Uh, those in favor, say aye, please. Those opposed? Uh, the motion carries. Um, Ms. Gates, you, you, 
you, you have the next item out of the Planning Commission? Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Committee? Uh, this item was considered and approved um, unanimously by the Planning Committee and recommended um, for approval by the Committee of the Whole, and I move its approval this evening. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Mm -hmm. motion, ca uh, motion carries unanimously. Um, there being no f further business, um, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for having us. This is William, hopefully your favorite videographer. We love comments. If you don't like the way Dart is handling things, lay it out for everyone to see. If you like or hate this video, tell us. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, tell us. We even love it when you call. Better yet, like or follow us on Facebook or subscribe to us on YouTube and get instant notices of all our videos the moment they are posted.